it should be gone.
Did you only have an alkalite here? Is this
doing? trip out. 
Good morning. Good morning. Welcome. Welcome to this. Do I got sound yet or not? Yeah. It's working? Good. Welcome to this 23rd Sunday after Pentecost where we proclaim God the Father, our Creator, God the Son, our Savior and Mediator, and God the Holy Spirit, our inspiration. The triune God has blessed us as a people and we have come together to sing praises, to pray, to read from God's Word and meditate on it, to confess our sins and receive absolution and also to confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. So welcome. Announcements, anything from the congregation? I'll, uh, make, do you get this ahead of time or you just, yes? Oh, coffee and cookies afterwards, wow. <laughs> Great. And also, listen here, um, Pastor Beth and Jack will be turning late tonight. Have you got any updates on what they've been doing? Or? Yeah, didn't hear much, huh? On, uh, I guess it's tomorrow night, women's have, women have a Bible study at Zion. Is that right? And I think that I was going to be on that channel on Monday morning. Oh, it didn't? Yeah. That canceled, okay. We have a council meeting on Tuesday night. Council meeting on Tuesday night. And Zion Lutheran decorating party in Potluck, the first Sunday of Advent. That's going. First communion class coming soon. Watch for details. Men's Bible study at Zion Lutheran at 7 on Tuesday. Is still having that? Then no. Thanksgiving Eve worship service on Wednesday the 23rd. Then Christmas Eve. Going fast. And that'd be Saturday, December 24th. Anything else? The title for our morning's meditation is Not One Stone Will Be Left Upon Another. And that comes from the Gospel of Luke. And as usual, I use all the lessons of the, that we read for our, our opening and for our Bible, from our Bible. And uh, got to hang on a little bit because I jumped from one spot to another. So. We'll see. If, we'll see how that all works out. Good to see you again. Haven't seen seen you for a while. And since we've last been together, we, my wife and I, have had three grandchildren under the age of four. Two boys, and the one boy, the latest one, is only two months old. So I thought we'd be having great-grandchildren now, don't grandchildren, but we will take what we get, and they certainly are a joy. Also, we have celebrated our 51st wedding anniversary so, at, back in June. Anything been happening in Zion lately, for the last two or three years? Um, any, any wedding celebrations? No weddings? Any uh, new grandchildren or, or, or great-grandchildren? Anybody get any? What about new friends? <laughs> <laughs> and how about new members? Good. It's always good to go that way instead of that way, isn't it? Yeah. Also, uh, have you been living life with God in your heart? You see, that's one of the reasons you're probably here. Well, let's prepare our hearts and minds before we begin our service. Lord, we ask that you be with us. Please rise, and we'll begin our service on, on page three in your, in your bulletin. We invite the Holy Spirit to be present as we begin our worship. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who redeems us in Christ Jesus, 
whose steadfast love endures forever. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. God of mercy and forgiveness, we confess that we have sinned against you and our neighbors. We have ignored voices that call for your justice. We have neglected actions that witness to your wretched righteousness. We have spoken and acted in ways that disrupted your love community. We truly repent of these things we have done and left undone. For the sake of Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Restore our troubled spirits so that we may live in newness and follow the way of the Spirit and build up the body of Christ. Amen. Rejoice and be glad. God hears the prayers of all who cry out and restores us to the life through the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. I therefore declare to you the forgiveness of all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. You may be seated and we'll continue on with page 769. But if you trust God and, and God to guide you. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all.
Let us pray together the prayer of the day found in your insert. O oh God, the protector of all who trust in you, without you nothing is strong, nothing is holy. Embrace us with your mercy, that with you as our ruler and guide, we may live through what is temporary without losing what is eternal. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Now I have this morning's readings. The first reading is from Malachi chapter 4. See the day is coming, burning like an oven, when all the arrogant and all evildoers will be stubble. The day that comes shall burn them up, says the Lord of hosts, so it will leave them neither root nor branch. But for you who revere my name, the Son of Righteousness shall rise with healing in its wings. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second reading is from 2 Thessalonians chapter 3. Now we command you, beloved, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, to keep away from believers who are living in idleness and not according to the tradition that they received from us. For you yourselves know how you ought to imitate us. We were not idle when we were with you, and we did not eat anyone's bread without paying for it. But with toil and labor we worked night and day, so that we might not burden any of you. This was not because we do not have that right, but in order to give you an example to imitate. For even when we were with you, we gave you this command. Anyone unwilling to work should not eat. For we hear that some of you are living in idleness, mere busybodies, not doing any work. Now such persons we command and exhort in the Lord Jesus Christ to do their work quietly and to earn their own living. Brothers and sisters, do not be weary in doing what is right. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please rise for the reading of the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 21st chapter. To you, O Lord. And it reads, When some were speaking about the temple, how it was adorned with beautiful stones and gifts dedicated to God, he said, Jesus said, as for these things that you see, days will come when not one stone will be left upon another. All will be thrown down. They asked him, Teacher, when will this be and what will be a sign that this is about to take place? And he said, Beware that you are not led astray, for many will come in my name and say, I am he, and the time is near. Do not go after them. When you hear wars and insurrections, do not be terrified, for these things must take place first, but the end will not follow immediately. Then he said to them, rise, Nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be great earthquakes in various places, famines and plague, plagues, and there will be dreadful portents and great signs from heaven. But before all this occurs, they will arrest you and persecute you, they will hand you over to the synagogue and prisons, and you will be brought before kings and governors because of my name. This will give you an opportunity to testify. So make up your minds not to prepare your defense in advance, for I will give you words and a wisdom that none of your opponents will be able to withstand or contradict. You will be betrayed even by parents and brothers, by relatives and friends, and they will put some of you to death. You will be hated by all because of my name, but not a hair of your head will perish. By your endurance, you will gain your souls. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. You may be seated.
Grace and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. And let us pray. Good and gracious God, we thank you for this day, for bringing us together to celebrate all the marvelous things you, you have given us. We thank you for those gifts. We would like to sing to you a new song, but we don't have the lyrics or the tune written yet. Lord, we are working on it, but we need help with the composition. Our hope is a new song that will honor you. Grant us the ability and the desire to keep working so all our days we will sing with joy in our heart, realizing you have led us toward oneness with you. Father, we read there will be a day when not one stone will be left upon another. What will we do? For you have given us many blessings, and we are afraid we won't know how to live without them. Help us to remember you have given us a work, work ethic that will honor and praise your holy name. Lord, open our heart to those who are fearful of the future. Guide us in comforting them. Grant us the desire and the ability in urging them in receiving the love you give to all people. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The title for our morning, this morning's meditation, like I said before, is not one stone will be left upon another. Way back when, back, way back when I had my youth, that was my, one of my goals. For it was fun to throw stones. Not just any old stone, but the right size and the right shape. At my grandparents' home, there was a barn 40, 50, 60 yards from this place where I could find good stones. I, had vi I would envision the stone going over the roof. However, most of the time, it didn't make it to the barn. And a few would land on the wood roof and roll down the steep decline. Today, I still have a desire to throw stones. But my bones and my muscles tell me, just remember those days and be happy with those memories. Those memories we have, do they, what do they consist of? Are they pleasant? Or are they just recollections? One of the pastors that we were blessed with over in the Blue Hill area did not see many sunsets, or sunrises for that matter, for they were not visible because of all the trees and of the mountainous landscape. In Nebraska, we have some of the most beautiful sunrises and sunsets I have even taken pictures of them because they just put me in awe. But those pictures just don't cut it, especially after you have experienced the real thing. In our gospel lesson for today, people were admiring the beautiful temple and all those huge stones that formed the building. Jesus said, all will be destroyed. Hard to believe. We wonder why. The barn that I threw stones at at my youth has very little left of the roof today. It was, in my view, decades ago, a great barn. But now is all but destroyed. Why? because no one is there to tend it and mend it. Besides, most don't, barns are of little value today. We wonder, what has happened to all the churches? 
Could it be there are not enough people living in Nebraska? Do they keep them tended and mended? Or are they like the sunrise and the sunset? Enjoy them while you can, for not one stone will be left upon another. Scary thought, right? From verse 7 we read, Teacher, when will this be and what will be the sign that this is about to take place? Notice the people was not worried about the destruction of the temple. They worried when it will happen. Jesus told them, Beware that you are not led astray, for many will come in my name and say, I am he, and the time is near. Do not go after them. Will we recognize the many that come and try to convince the people and us what is important in life? Are they just like those sunrises and sunsets? They last for a beautiful short while and then are gone? Jesus states there will be wars and insurrections. Do not be terrified, for these things must take place. When we see things destroyed, we cannot help but be worried. From Paul's second letter of Thessalonians, chapter 3, verse 6 states, Now we command you, beloved, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, to keep away from believers who are living in idleness, idleness and not according to the tradition that they received from us. Is this the reason the temple, church for that matter, will or is being destroyed? Because the stones that were, in, were placed one upon the other are not tended to and maintained? Does our reasoning consist of it took a long time to place those huge stones? They will last for a long, long time? And they do. However, God's word is forever. A long, long time is but a moment in God's eyes. In the 1940s, <clears throat> my parents purchased a farm near Coles, Nebraska, a place my two sisters and I were born. In 50, 1958, they moved to a farm near Blue Hill. On the Coles farm, my parents built a small barn, a milk house, and a two-car garage. When we moved, those buildings went with us, along with the sides of an old barn that was torn down. Those side walls would become a part of a single car garage. This past summer, we shingled that single car garage because the roof had some shingles that blew off a few years ago. We waited a little bit too long because there were some decayed boards that needed to be replaced. If we would have waited much longer, the garage would have been useless. What we bring into the world will make a difference if we tend to it and mend it. Psalms 98 states, Make a joyful noise to the Lord all the earth. Break forth into joyous song and sing praises. As we work and maintain those many responsibilities we are blessed with, do them with joy in our heart. Our soul, our inner being, is also in need of maintenance. If something is rotting, it needs to be removed. And as the decay is removed, place a new covering over it and be joyful in it and with those tasks. Malachi 4, verse 2 reads, But for you who revere my name in the Son of Righteousness, 
my name, the Son of Righteousness, shall rise with healing in its wings. You shall go out like leaping like calves from a stall. This would be a great start to our day. Hmm? Is it possible to go out like leaping calves from the stall? This is one of the reasons Americans love sports. We like to see the young run, throw, jump, and watch their endurance and resolution. It takes training and resolve and faithfulness for that task. Luke 21, 5 states, When some were speaking about the temple, how it was, adorn how it was adorned with beautiful stones and gifts dedicated to God, Jesus said, As for these things that you see, the days will come when not one stone will be left upon another. All will be thrown down. Dear friends in Christ, what is our, our purpose, our focus? What good is brick and mortar if we focus on its greatness and beauty? We maintain the temple. Why? Because of its beauty? Or because of the next generation? Or is it because of let you fill in the blank. Psalm 98, verse 6 through 9 interprets, With trumpets and with the sound of the horn, make a joyful noise before the King, the Lord. Let the sea roar and all that fills it, the world and all that who live in it. Let the floods clap their hands, let the hills, hills sing together for joy at the presence of the Lord, for he is coming to judge the earth. He will judge the world with righteousness and the peoples with equity. The Bible is a book of God's love. Live and maintain your life with its word. The church building is a beautiful meeting place. Keep it in good condition but focus on the people who worship in it so they will proclaim God's goodness. And people, and the people who avoid it, invite them and their children. Teach them about God's love and equip them for a life that will inspire them to sing a new song. For within these walls, let us exclaim forgiveness and throughout life, let us forgive others and let us always seek forgiveness. Second Thessalonians 3, 13 encourages us. Brothers and sisters, do not be weary, weary in doing what is right. Not one stone will be left upon another. How true. In life we have homesteads that we tend to and some of them that just exist in our mind. We have sunrises and sunsets to view. We have young people that run and leap and old people that hurt and become dormant. We have life filled with joy and at times suffer sorrow. There are times of plenty and also famines and plagues. We have life that is surrounded by loved ones and also filled with loneliness. Luke 21, 18 promises, but not a hair, not, not a hair of your head will perish. By endurance, you will gain your soul. Faith in God is that which we seek. God's love brings us salvation. The end has not yet come, but the triune God reigns. 
And friends, know this. The Father creates, the Son forgives, and the Holy Spirit inspires. And to that we say, praise be to God. Amen. Continue by singing hymn number 765. Continue on page six, and you please stand if you're, as you're able, and let's confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Now having the prayers of intercession. United with your saints across time and place, we pray for our shared world. Reviving God, keep your church active in its mission and ministry. Encourage bishops, deacons, pastors, and lay leaders to risk boldly in their proclamation and fill them with wisdom and endurance for challenging times. Lord, in your mercy. Renewing God, as the Northern Hemisphere prepares for winter, make us mindful of the ordered, ordered beauty of your creation. Teach us to treasure cycles of rest and new life. Help us to care for what you have made. Lord, in your mercy. Loving God, 
accompany all, accompany all who make sacrifices for the, sacrifice, uh, for the sake of others. Safeguard first responders and active duty military personnel. Grant peace to veterans and heal any wounds in body, mind, and spirit. Lord, in your mercy. Healing God, your people cry out to you. Sustain doctors, nurses, and hospital personnel in their tireless work. Uphold the mental health of health, uh, mental health professional, uh, professionals and those in their care. May the sun of righteousness ride on, rise on all who are sick. And we pray for Rod Crockett, Irvin Schiffler, Everett and Adam Labner, Labners, Jan Lawson, Riley Shuck, Perry Elton, Elijah Philippi, Philippi, Joanne Lubin, Brett Ar Arjo, Laverta Walker, Howard Johnson, Gail Rickett, Josh Towie. And we also pray for those who are homebound and friends of the family. Bert Miller, Larry McLaughlin, Carolyn Moser, Helen Buckles, Dolores Van Skyver, Edna Johnson, Loretta Kowalski, Fern Fisher, Theo Theora Lang, Margaret Cronance, and Bonnie Dummler. Lord, in your mercy, see you. Uniting God, unite this assembly with its shared mission and missionary for the sake of the gospel. Highlight ways we can better work together and give us patience to work through disagreements. Lord, in your mercy, And gracious Lord, we thank you for the harvest and for those who are still harvesting, protect them. And as the confirmands and Sunday school students and teachers come together, inspire them through your word. Lord, in your mercy. Consoling God, abide with all who grieve for loved ones and who have died. Comfort us with the promise of the resurrection and new life with you. Lord, in your mercy. Accept these prayers, gracious God, those known only to you and through our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Receive the offering or do you, how do you do that or do you just drop it off? pray together the offering prayer found on page 8 merciful father we offer with joy and thanksgiving which you have first given us ourselves our time and our possessions signs of your gracious love receive them for the sake of him who offered himself for us Jesus Christ our Lord amen Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And God of peace, who creates all things and calls them good, who makes us alive in Jesus, who breathes on us the spirit of hope, bless you now and forever.
Amen. Sending him number 314. And now may the God of peace, who creates all things and calls them good, who makes us alive in Jesus, and, bru and who breathes on us the spirit of hope, bless you now and forever. Amen. And go in peace and be a blessing to the world. Thanks be to God. God.